<laughs> Literally not a single person asked for this video. So here I am doing it. Today I want to show you all of the allocations in my collection, which is actually more than I thought I had. I thought I had like maybe six and it turns out I have 12. And these have been collected probably over the course of the last two and a half years or so, very slowly. I wanted to make a video showing all of my allocations in kind of varying stages of health and just go through how I care for them because I feel like what I have right now is pretty indicative of how allocations can be. I find that a lot of people avoid allocations just because they have this reputation of being super finicky and just always like on the brink of decline. Like you could have them thriving and then they can just be gone in an instant. Instant, instant, in an instance, in an instant. Why is that so difficult? Like they can be super healthy and trucking along one minute and then the next minute they're just like, okay, bye. I feel like I've found a way to care for my allocations that have kept them from going dormant, from dying back completely. And I think I've learned some things along the way that taught me not to freak out so much about allocations, like what to expect when repotting and things like that. So this video, I guess, will just be showing you all of the allocation in my collection, kind of like their story, how I've been caring for them, the reasons behind why it looks the way it does. I feel like if you're struggling with allocations, hopefully some of these things will help you. And if you are like incredibly amazing at growing allocations, maybe you have something to teach me as well about growing allocations. But in general, this is mostly gonna be just a show and tell video because I don't think I've completely cracked the code on growing allocations like incredibly amazingly. I don't know if it's like my light conditions or the level of warmth in my house, but without filming a 20 minute intro, let's just get started. So I've never done one of these videos before where I show every plant of a particular genus in my collection. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to show the plants in order of the ones that have been with me longest to the ones that I've acquired the most recently. Cause like the plants that I've had the longest, I'm gonna have the most to talk about in terms of their care and like how it's done, like any journey that they've had with me. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I can't guarantee that this is exactly the right chronological order in the order that I obtained them. So I have them listed in order that I think that I got them in. So starting from the oldest one in my collection, this is my Alocasia Silver Dragon. For being as old as it is, it's not very big. I got this, I think, in early 2020. So about two and a half years I've had this plant. This plant has been neglected a lot. It's been through a lot. It's been, it's died back down to its rhizome and grown back. It's produced a lot of babies. It's actually um, pupped in this pot and then grown out entire plant and I've separated it out. So it was like really, really bushy. It was like another full plant here and I separated one out to give to a friend. But you can see right now, it's, it's corm city. There's a corm, there's two corms here, one here, one here. There's one here. There's probably a bunch down below in the pot. There are, there, what did flower three flowers in a row and I've let them kind of like flower and go through all the stages and die off naturally. These two are still in the process of dying and it's been pretty good at holding on to leaves for quite a long time, even through the flowering. So it only started flowering for me this year. Not that I was gonna do anything with the flowers, but it hadn't produced flowers up until this past summer. Up until then, it would do that alocasia thing where it would grow a leaf and then yellow one off, grow a leaf, yellow one off. It wasn't until recently that it started to hold on to a lot more leaves, even through the flowering. So I don't even remember the last time this um, dropped a leaf. You could see how many leaves and flowers it's holding on to right now. I've grown to love this plant so much. When I first got it, I was just so in awe of this plant. Like this was not an easy allocation to come by in 2020. I mean, most plants weren't that easy to come by. So I paid a lot more for this plant than it is worth today. But in saying that, everything was kind of really expensive back then. I don't remember where I was going with that thought. Oh yes, yeah, so like I really was obsessed with this plant when I first got it. And then it being an alocasia and being a little bit finicky and not growing that well for me for a long time, I stopped caring about it 
I kind of like just neglected it and just kept it alive for a long time and it wasn't until recently when it started to get really bushy and it put out this really nice big fat leaf that I really fell back in love with this plant and like look at it it's so cute when it's so bushy when I first got it, it was sold to me in like this mixture of like coco coir and moss and it did okay in that but I transferred it into Lekka I want to say sometime late in 2020 and it's been in Lekka ever since so this is in like um orchid pot a very algae ridden orchid pot in a glass outer pot do I love this for this plant not really like specifically the orchid pots with the slits because when I take this out I'm gonna be damaging a lot of the roots but it's happy enough in this and it's like growing the next repot that I do of this plant I'm gonna get into no drainage like directly into a no drainage drainage vessel I, it's been doing really well in Leka for me so I might just keep it in Leka forever so this has been growing in semi hydro for about two years I want to say and I've kept it really root bound for a long time and it seems to be doing okay it's just that it's not sizing up that much although in saying that it was sizing up and then it produced a bunch of flowers and it reverted in size a little bit so this is one of the newer leaves here this one here quite a bit smaller than the previous ones, but I think that is to be expected. I didn't really increase the feed that much when it was flowering, and maybe that's just a learning for me, but yeah. Um, the one thing I will say about this and the green dragon is that they have not done well in very high humidity for me. They've done the best in my living room conditions. When I had this in my um, Ikea Millsbo cabinet, it would like just, brown and rot at the base of the petioles and I've heard that people grow it in their like tents and greenhouses pretty much with fans aimed at the plant and it does okay but without like a lot of airflow these these guys really do just melt back I wasn't about to put a fan into my cabinet just to you know increase airflow for the airflow loving plants so I just took it out it grows in my living room under a 20 watt grow light so yeah, this is the oldest one in my collection, about two and a half years. The next oldest one, I think, I'm pretty sure, is this guy right here. This is my Alocasia cupria. This one was grown from a corm that I got from Jing. And this was back when also cupria was a little bit harder to find. Hers was imported, I think, from Equigenera, maybe sometime in like 2019. She had basically grown it back from nothing because alocasias are pretty bad to acclimate. They come in and they drop all their leaves and they kind of rot back and it's kind of a dicey situation. So I don't super recommend importing alocasias. Or if you do, don't pay a lot for them and buy multiples. So yeah, this one was grown from a little corm maybe in end of 2020. Yeah, end of 2020, beginning of 2021. And it's grown quite a bit. It's definitely bigger than my silver dragon, but it's not able to hold on to as many leaves. But this is the biggest leaf on it. And it also started to flower for me this year. The newest leaf after the flower is quite a bit smaller, but it's very cute. I just, I love the stage of the leaf while it's still fresh enough that it's super shiny because it's just like this holographic glossy like wet looking leaf it's so cool i'm pretty sure i'll always have this allocation in my collection because it's just a plant that looks like it shouldn't exist it's just a leaf like unlike anything else this bloody purple abaxial is so cool how is my camera overheating already okay hold on i don't really remember what i was talking about with this one but this one also lives in Leka. It's been living in Leka since I got it. I'm pretty sure I got it from Jing in Leka and it's been doing fine. So I've kept it in Leka. I've upgraded its pot, I think probably like only twice. I've let it get super root bound. This was repotted maybe at the beginning of this year or spring. I don't really remember. It lives in my living room. It gets fed with every watering. I tried to feed it a lot because it's in such a inert substrate. It got great white this year and then it put out this big leaf shortly after. Nothing much more to say about it other than I love this plant. It's a really like low profile plant in my collection. It doesn't require much, it's super fuss free and it just lives in my living room and it drops leaf every now and then. But um, I'm looking forward to growing this big if that ever happens. I don't know if I have enough light and warmth in that area to 
get it really 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 big because I find that warmth and light are the most important for my allocations to get them to hold on to a lot of leaves while like also feeding them quite well because I find them to be very heavy feeders or on the heavier side of my aeroids and um, yeah feeding them well but giving them warmth and light is the most important to keep them growing strong healthy fast and prevent them from going dormant so I don't know if I'll ever be able to grow that to like those giant like rib cage looking things. I don't know if I'll be able to get them much bigger than this, but I don't really have any other place to grow them other than my living room. So if it stays like this, fine. I just would love for it to start to hold on to more leaves. So the next one I believe should be my Alocasia Black Velvet. This one I think I got in early 2021 something like that maybe a year and a half ago feels like longer than that to me maybe i got it around the same time as the cupria i'm not really sure it feels like longer than a year and a half so i'm gonna say i probably had this closer to like two years this is currently recovering from muley bugs because it's on a shelf with a lot of muley bugs surprisingly the muley bugs didn't like really damage the plant they just kind of grew all over the plant and it obviously shows up a lot on these black leaves now i don't see i don't think i'm in the clear with the muleys right now but i don't see them like clustering i don't see a lot of egg sacs i can't tell if the white on here is like remnants of paper towel. I did treat it recently with a systemic, um, a boni systemic containing acephate. It was this like liquid systemic that Jing got for me and prior to that I was using the boni systemic granules which is imidacloprid based. Now the acephate one is liquid and it seemed to work on some plants with mealybugs and not on certain plants with mealybugs like the Hoyas and the mealybugs are just I cannot get the mealybugs off of the Hoyas, but for this one, it seemed to have worked. I'll throw up a photo of what that Boni product looks like, but I will say that if you are sensitive to smells, I do not recommend this one because it is like the worst rotten vegetable smell I've ever smelled. Like I, it smelled like my entire vegetable drawer, my fridge had gone rotten and I just left my fridge door open. Like it, that smell kind of lingered for probably like 24 hours and it just kind of like permeated the whole living room. So it wasn't very nice at all. But in saying that, it did seem to work on mealybugs on the aeroids. And this is one of them. So this one is looking quite bushy. I'll just show you the whole plant. Well, this is actually two plants. So this was purchased locally and it was one plant, but what I did was I let one of the um, corms or the pups grow out in the same pot. I just didn't remove it and now it's like this bushy thing. And it doesn't really know where to face because it's on a shelf with 20 watt grow lights, so the same as my silver dragon. But because it's kind of tall and it's kind of big, it gets too close to the light and they burn so I keep rotating the plant and it keeps wanting to move towards the light so it's a little bit crazy right now. I wish I could get them to face forward. But yeah, this one is also in Lekka. I, I, oh my God. I'm really just putting off repotting this because I know how much damage it's gonna make, but the roots are looking pretty gross at the bottom. It's like really brown. I think that's probably from Myco and there's probably rotten roots as well, but seems to be doing fine. I think that it dries out on the regular and then I flush it again with water and creates dry rot at the bottom. Doesn't really seem to be affecting the plant on a whole and um, it's got like a million corms as well. This one flowers a lot. Like this flowered for uh, since I had it. Every other leaf pretty much is the flower and they always it always grows two flowers at a time, which I feel like is something that some species of allocations will do. There's not really much I can say about this one that I haven't already said about the other ones. It's just feed it with every watering, give it light, give it warmth. It doesn't seem to actually mind quite a bit of light. Like you can see that these leaves are still quite black, even though it's so close to a 20 watt grow light, like almost touching. Also a plant that I wouldn't grow in high humidity just because I don't think it needs it. I think the allocations that have a lot like thinner leaves are the ones that do well in greenhouses, but the ones with like very thick leather leaves like this and the dragon scale and the silver dragon and the scalp rum, those ones I don't think 
require high humidity and actually do well out in an area with a lot of airflow. So that's the black velvet. And then following that, I think, I think the next oldest one is this one, which is my Alocasia Maharani, which also grows in my living room, but gets severely neglected and probably needs a repot into something where I can monitor the substrate more because this is in one of those like crystal glasses with like a lot of texture, which makes it difficult for you to see um, the water levels. But yeah, I got this one as a corn from my friend JR. I think it was around winter of 2021 or something like that. This is like the biggest leaf I've grown and it's super, super leggy. It grows on, um, it pretty much just gets natural light from a south facing window, but the it's like quite dark on that side because that entire side of my house is a forest. So even though it's south facing, it's not a ton of light. So yeah, you can see how long the petioles are and it probably should be a lot bigger <laughs> given its age, but it's not, but it's really cute. So if you didn't know, Maharani is a hybrid of Alocasia Mellow and Alocasia Black Velvet. So it looks so similar to the Mellow. Sometimes I can't really tell them apart, but I feel like the Maharani is a lot more velvety looking, a little bit more smooth. The Mellow, I feel like it's a lot more like rhinocerosy, but they are very, very similar. I don't think I have a Mellow. I thought I got a quorum of it from Charmaine, but I think that now that I think about it, either I lost it or we didn't harvest that quorum. And I had a little minor freak out because I thought maybe I did bring that quorum home and I grew it out and then I decluttered it in my declutter video. Because if you watch that video, I did declutter a small Maharani or what I thought was a Maharani. And then I was like, hold on, was that a mellow? And I decluttered a mellow because I do like the mellow a lot. But now that I think about it, it did have this like reddish blush to it, which you can see a little bit on this one, which this reddishness, it gets that from the black velvet. The mellow would be like all green on the back. So like this plant is not mature enough to produce corms for me yet. And I just don't know how I grew that one from a corm, which I didn't have corms. So I don't know, that's a mystery I'll never figure out. But yeah, anyways, useless sidebar. This one is um, not as big as it should be. It probably needs to be repotted. This is actually two plants. This one is little corm that grew out. <laughs> so cute. I need to try a little bit harder with this one. It's such a beautiful plant. It's one of those like, you know, leathery, thick, jewel alocasias that I really love. I think like if I give it the love that it needs and the better conditions and just a little bit more attention, I can grow it into something really nice and something that makes me like really happy. It is on the list for um, a little bit more attention, but that said, it's a pretty easy going alocasia. It doesn't get any special light or humidity. Has it grown amazingly? No, but in light of what it's been given and the conditions and everything, I think it's a pretty, pretty hardy one. And then the next one I think is my Alocasia Green Dragon, which also is doing amazing. This one I purchased with Charmaine, so winter of 2021, I think. I think this is about a year old in my collection. When I purchased it, it was in soil, and then I moved it into pond, and every time I move an Alocasia from soil to pond, it drops a lot of leaves, it drops all of its roots, no matter how well I clean the roots prior to transitioning it, drops all its roots, and then it takes a little while for it to come back, and then I never gave it the best light after that, so it's grown like super, super leggy. I really wanted to put it into this pot, I thought it was really cute, so I put it into another slip pot with pond, and then because it's in a cover pot, I always let this one dry out because I just don't see the moisture. So that's the reason for these like yellowy crispy tips, like this one here, this one here. But surprisingly, it's held on to the leaves that it has for quite some time. If I were to give this one a little bit more attention, which I, 
I'll be honest, this one is pretty low priority for me. This one um, kind of just sits there and it gets watered when it gets watered. I don't know, for some reason it just, I thought I would love it more than I actually did, but I ended up loving the Silver Dragon a lot more than this one. I don't know if it's a sentimental thing or that it's like performing better for me, but this one was never very high on my list of priorities to kind of give it a lot of TLC. But if I were to give it TLC, I would probably put it into a no drainage clear glass container in in the same pond that it's in and just kind of give it a little bit more light because right now it also gets like natural light exclusively from a south facing low light window that gets a lot of shade in regards to the pond transition and it dropping all its roots i was talking to charmaine about this um the other day just last week i think in the car and we were talking about like how we can prevent that from happening and it's not something i've tried yet but i do want to try it the next time i'm transi transi transitioning a alocasia from soil into pond i think an intermediate stage this is what we were talking about in the car intermediate stage of having it just in water before moving it to pond might be helpful because worst case scenario if it drops and like rots off its roots in the water then i have an opportunity to cut the roots off and then get it to root again in pond without having all these dead roots in it because you'll see later that um, i have some fresh transitions where the roots have fallen off as predicted but then it's like already in the substrate, you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna try that going forward with my alocasias for like pond transitions. I don't think that this is necessary for every genus, but alocasias specifically just love to drop all their roots. Even actually from like going from pond upgrading to a bigger pot in the same pond substrate, I find that um, it likes to drop a lot of roots at that point as well. But in those circumstances, I. I wouldn't take off all the pond and then put it into water. I would just like kind of deal with the root droppage. But particularly when you go from soil to pond, like a completely different substrate and you have to take off all of the substrate, that's when I find alocasias drop like all of their roots pretty much, leaving maybe just like the few primary roots that don't drop, but all of the secondary roots drop. That's something I want to try with my alocasias going forward, although I don't have any plans to get any alocasias soon, but, but if the root thing is something you're struggling with, because I have had people ask me about that particular challenge with alocasias, I think maybe try the water intermediate stage and that's not to say that it's gonna stop it from dropping the roots but it gives you the opportunity to not like let it rot in the new substrate okay the next one now these few ones I wasn't sure who I got first so they might be out of order this one is my alocasia scalprum when these dropped in our local nursery it's just so random I was like always intrigued by this alocasia but I never thought I'd be able to get it locally let alone for like four dollars or five dollars yeah i've had this one i think oh yes i remember exactly now this was purchased when i was in montreal on my work trip so would have been like june of 2021 yeah so a year and a bit ago i got this plant and it was about a little smaller than this leaf when i got it it was quite a baby plant and it's currently in soil this is actually the only alocasia i have in soil why is it in soil you ask i'm not really sure i don't rem really remember why i put it in soil but it's doing fine it's doing really well actually it responded so well to great white when i put great white on it it's been growing in my exo like up top there it recently got moved out of the exo because it fell off and then i was like well it's kind of outgrowing the exo anyway so i might as well try to grow it out here in this open shelf it's just put out this leaf it's still unfurling right it's not even fully open yet and it's already got the next one pushing out right here it's growing so fast it's so thirsty it's pretty root bound and I find that it likes it that way. I find most of my alocasias like to be root bound or pretty snug in the pot at least. I don't find them to slow down very much when they're like very root bound. Unless of course they're so big that the majority of their rhizome is above the substrate and like it's losing a lot of opportunity to root into the substrate. I find that's when it slows down but if like a lot of the rhizome is still close to the substrate and it's able to root into it 
I think um, that's when it likes to be really snug in the pot with the roots because they root like crazy. I think I wouldn't mind keeping this in soil to be honest because it's been doing so well. And this is one of the allocations that holds on to leaves like such a champ. It's just such a good one. This one's been growing so close to grow light, although it's not a super strong grow light. It's the 10 watt grow light, but it's literally touching the grow light. And I don't really see light burn on any of the leaves. This one was unfurled like right up against the grow light and it looks just pristine and it's grown nice and compact. Like you can see that the petioles are nice and short. I wanna say this is one of my most favorite allocations in my entire collection. Definitely in the top three. It's such a good one and I'm so happy to see like people saying that they're falling in love with this plant or that they really like this plant because I really thought this was like one of the like under celebrated allocations in the whole genus because like nobody seems to really care about them but they're just absolutely stunning. They're so rewarding to grow and if you don't have one and you come across one I highly highly recommend it and this is the biggest leaf yeah this is the biggest leaf I've grown I think this one no this one's gonna be smaller so this being the biggest leaf it's about the size of my forearm they get so much bigger than this and they're just so texturally satisfying I cannot say enough good things about this plant as with all allocations when it's putting out a leaf, really, really watch the moisture in the substrate. Like don't let it dry out because you might get like an underdeveloped leaf. You might trigger it to drop one of the older leaves in order to support the new growth. So I literally watered this two days ago and you can see moisture in the substrate, but this pot is really, really light. So it's gonna need a water like tomorrow probably. I forgot to mention this earlier, but in terms of watering, do not let your alocasia completely dry out. I've seen some advice that like alocasias should dry out in between watering, like that generic aeroid advice, but I do not recommend that with alocasias. You'll find them drooping and you know, drooping is like a sign of stress with the plant and the more you stress out the alocasia, the more it's like prone to dropping leaves and it might be more prone to pests than it already is. Like a lot of people find alocasia to be spider mite magnets. I mean, knock on wood, I've never had alocasias with spider mites. I've never had spider mites. So I can't really speak to the spider mite issues, but definitely letting them dry out between waterings is not going to help with their um, defenses against pests. Okay, next up is my pride and joy, my Alocasia fried egg. So I haven't shown this one in a little while. It's not doing its best. It's been through a little bit of stress this summer. The first stress it had was when I moved it out of an exo that was here. I was kind of redoing this wall and it was in one of my smaller exos that I completely broke down and I'm just not using anymore. So it was without a home and it was sitting in it went from like very high humidity to like regular room humidity, like just cold turkey and it did not like that. So it started to brown off all of the very white bits of the leaves. Every leaf that has grown since then has been fine in, in terms of like the variegated parts staying nice. Like this one here and these two are the newest leaves. And it's now growing in my tent because I don't want to deal with it dying back. I couldn't bear for this plant to die back. So I'm trying to keep it pristine. Although the funny thing that I found about this plant is that grown in lower light, the variegation is so green. It actually went through a stage where it was quite like yellowy variegation. So this one before it turned like creamy white, it was yellowier. But you can see that the the white parts is not as white as what it used to be. This would have been grown under a stronger grow light. So this would have been grown under 20 or 25 watt. I don't really remember. Just look at the difference between the color of the variegation between high light and lower light. It was way more drastic than I ever anticipated. Like this is that like kind of yellowy, creamy white, but you could see down here it's almost got like a minty like green modeling coming through and the latest two leaves are so green which I kind of love like I've always loved like a lime green on green variegation and this is just such a cool coloration on this plant this is the newest leaf that just unfurled maybe last week 
and it looks so stunning. Oh my God. I kind of miss like the bright, bright white of the highlight, but this is really cool too. Cause it's like, it's just like a new phase in this plant's life. So it's not doing its best. I had repotted it into pond. It threw a little bit of a fit with the roots because I think because it was a repot after being a little bit stressed with being ripped out of high humidity. So it threw more of a fit than it ever had for me. It's up until then it'd been like the most fuss free allocation ever. It just, every time I repotted it into a larger vessel, it just like kept on going. It just kept growing and growing, but it really slowed down this summer and then it reverted in size. So it's gonna be hard to show you what the size of the leaf was because the previous leaf, like one of the biggest ones is now looking like this, but it was much larger than these two are. But it's actively growing and I can see new roots in here. I just can see rotted roots as well. I'm just gonna allow the bacteria of the uh, inoculants kind of like eat away at that. I'm not gonna, you know, take the whole thing apart and get rid of the rotted roots. I don't think that's gonna be more beneficial than it might be harmful. So I'm just gonna leave it and let it do its thing. Kind of monitor the leaves. If it starts to decline rapidly, I know something's wrong, but it's actively growing and it's actively rooting. So I don't see any issues with it right now. And I'll just let it get root bound again in this pot before repotting it again. But I just don't think it's gonna happen until maybe spring at the very earliest. So maybe I have another six months with this plant in this pot before it needs to be repot. But yeah, this one is a gift from Jing and it's just the most beautiful <laughs> plant in my collection, I think. I mean, the most beautiful variegated plant, I think, in my collection for sure. And I just can't wait for this to grow a bunch of corn so I can grow another one out and give it back to her because she is lacking a big fried egg with good genes because her mother plant actually reverted, which is like the most infuriating thing because how does that make sense that an angel like her would have this kind of bad luck with variegation. But the crappy thing is that despite the age of this plant and despite the size of it, it does not want to produce corms. Like I, when I repotted it, not a single corm. How? I don't understand. And I'll have like tiny little TC allocations with like 10 corms on it. And they'd be like this big. How does that make sense? I really wanted to pull this one off before filming, but I'm leaving it on. I'm just gonna let it absorbed the nutrients back from the petiole. But yeah, without blabbing too much about this plant, I'm just gonna rotate a little bit, show you what it's like right now. It's not doing amazing, but it's not doing terribly either. So this next one is also like, I think a $5 alocasia. This is alocasia sinuata. Isn't it cute? I can't wait for this to get big. This is another one of those really leathery alocasias, very glossy. This is one of the older leaves. So this is what it looks like fully hardened. How beautiful is it? It looks like this texture in the shape and the venation and the color and everything is just wonderful. This is what I'm talking about. These tiny freaking alocasias from TC. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight corms coming out of it. One of them sprouting a leaf. Like I swear they've like pumped these full of hormones or something. They're so, so productive. This one hasn't grown amazing for me. This one lives on the same shelf as my silver dragon. It's in pawn and it's crazy algae ridden. It took a little bit of a hit because I had moved it from soil into pawn and then it did the whole root dropping thing. It put out a tiny, tiny leaf after that leaf transition. And then it put out this one which is a little bit bigger. And they recently put out this tiny guy again. So I don't know what his problem is. Maybe because it's putting all this energy into corms, idiot. I think I've had this for like six months or something like that. I mean, I haven't done amazing things with it. I don't really have much to say about it. I have, I treat it exactly the same as my silver dragon. It gets watered at the same time, maybe like once every 10 days or so. So probably not as often as it needs. It gets fed with pretty much every watering, although I don't really balance it out with probably CalMeg as often as I need to. It just gets diluted like all-purpose fertilizer. Right now I'm using um, TPS-1, although for the majority of its life, it was probably getting either Dynagro or a mixture of Liquid Gold Leaf and MSU. So yeah, it's one of the newer allocations in my collection, but I haven't really done anything of note with it, so I don't have much to say about it. But it's really cute, I really like it. I don't think I need, I mean, I'm 
gonna keep this around for the foreseeable future. I have no intention of getting rid of this plant or any of these allocations for that matter. Like I did my declutter and everything here that I'm showing you today are allocations that I have no intention to get rid of because I did get rid of two allocations in my declutter, but these ones are ones that I still really, really like and I'm still kind of emotionally invested in growing. So next is this guy. This one is sad. This is my Alocasia sanderiana nobilis. So my boyfriend's wishlist plant that we got in the summer, so about three months ago. Yeah, it was growing in a like a coco coir soil mix that I didn't really, really like. And I knew that it was going to throw a bit of a fit after transitioning it to pond, which it did. The oldest leaf, no, yes, no, is that the oldest leaf? I can't tell. I think I think this is actually the oldest leaf. It's fully gone and then the second oldest leaf is yellowing and this majestic one is yellowing as well. It's not drooping yet but it's uh, it's only a matter of time before it goes. Um, all of the roots pretty much rotted in the pond but you can see well, I can see that um, there are some new roots growing, although they are kind of fine. So it was growing in the EXO up here. It is quite a low humidity EXO because I haven't really wet weather sealed it. So I was like, crap, when I saw this yellowing. So I just chucked it into my tent and I'm gonna let it rehab there. <gasps> I just realized I skipped a plant, doesn't matter. So yeah, this one is in <laughs> rehab mode. I'm not concerned about it dying. It's just going to be dyed back and then it's going to grow back. And if it doesn't get this big for the next leaf, that's fine. I just want it to survive and grow some corms. I want to reproduce this plant because I really, really, really love this alocasia. I didn't expect to love it as much as I do, but I really do. So I'm going to throw in a footage of what it looked like when this leaf came out. It was so majestic and so beautiful, but alas, it looks like this now. I'm not worried. It's gonna come back, it's gonna come back. Okay, the plant that I accidentally skipped is this guy. This one I actually got earlier this summer from Erin and she was decluttering her tent and she gave this to me. This is Alocasia Watsoniana. And this one I grew back from like a stump, a rhizome because it was dying back. I think it got dry rot in her tent or just like a lot of roots fell off from underwatering and it was droopy by the time it got to me. And I chucked it into a cup, like a smaller cup with the same pond that it was in and it's rooted back like crazy. Like this is ready for an up pot. I don't know if you can see, this is pretty much like a massive net of roots. It just grew back like a dream and I see it's popping out roots up here on the rhizome. If you can see here, we got some roots popping out. So it, pop it wants to be in a deeper pot and it's kind of like growing a little bit sideways. But I'm gonna do that after this leaf unfurls. So this is the first leaf that grew out from the dyed back rhizome. When I last showed this plant, I thought it was dying and it was like kind of droopy, but I thought for sure it was going, but apparently it was just taking a nap. And then this was the next leaf after that. This beautiful, stunning thing. Oh, look at that. This texture, I can't, it's so beautiful. It's so black and velvety and like just that Venation is so bright, but a little bit metallic. It's so, so, so freaking beautiful. And it's just put out this leaf here. So this plant, the leaves expand like crazy when they're hardening off. So I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being close to the same size as this leaf. I don't think it'll be quite as big, but it'll be pretty close, I think. It's a slowish grower for me, but I'm not really complaining because this plant like the bigger it gets the harder it's gonna be to keep it inside my tent and this one does live inside my tent and I do kind of want to keep it there because it's just so precious to me but yeah this one will need a repot soon into like a deeper water poly like something more similar to like this I'll get it like a deep deeper glass vessel and I'll keep it in pond um, what I'll do with this one ideally is when I take the root mass out it's gonna have like a lot of pond it's gonna be like kind of a cylinder of pond 
without disturbing it, like as little as possible, I'm just gonna transfer it into a larger substrate and cover it with more pond. So there's as little root disturbance as possible. It doesn't really need the roots to be loosened up. It'll just find its way. So if you can avoid doing that with alocasias, if you're doing it into the same exact substrate, I think that would cause the least amount of stress and root droppage and leaf droopage and everything after a repot. So yeah, this one is Alocasia watsoniana, where the full name is Alocasia longaloba var watsoniana. Such a good plant. These are now available in garden centers, which is really great. So if you can find one, I highly recommend it. They're not the easiest, I find. They're a little bit dramatic, but if you got a greenhouse or something, it's one of those ones, those thin leaf ones that do well in high humidity. I think that they are dramatic, but they are worth the drama. Oh, I have 13 plants. Sorry, it's not, thir it's not 12, it's 13. I'm starting to lose steam. Next up is this guy. This is my alocasia aslanii. So I did a, I'm so glad I didn't mention this in the video. I made a batch of killer pond. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I put a lethal amount of osmocote in it. I, I honestly don't know what was going through my head. I put so much osmocote in it and everything I repotted into that either died or very quickly declined and got really sickly. And I did that like right before the summer too. So all that heat probably was making the, the slow release just like release crazy amounts of nutrients. And then it was like burning all of my plants. So um, I'm so glad I never mentioned this Osmocote thing as a recommendation because I, I typically don't recommend anything unless I can have enough experience to kind of speak on it and like I can give you at least a good amount of anecdotal evidence that it works well. Luckily I saved this from the killer pond before it was completely dead but um, all the leaves are gone, all the roots are gone and it's basically, well, I can just take it out right now, it looks like this. No, it's got an active growth point you can see there and there's no roots and it's in pond now and um, it's in my tent um, on my seedling shelf and it's getting like warmth and not a crazy amount of light but some light and we'll just let it you know recover that way just kind of burying it back down so that's my aslani I, I'm not really concerned that it's gonna die completely it's just gonna take some time I probably should get into like a covered like prop box or something but you know I, I can't be bothered so it's like this for now and we'll give you some updates when it's back. So um, yeah, I no longer put Osmocote in my pond. Uh, what the Osmocote that I have now, I'll just put it into my soil mix, but no more for pond. Like It's like I, I'm fertilizing all the time, every watering anyways. I don't think that it needs it. And yeah, it just, it was bad. It was really bad. I will talk a little bit more about the killer pond in my next repot. I think I'm gonna, do a repot of like getting everything out of the killer pond, even though it's probably a little bit too late, but you know, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it in that video, but just wanted to say that's why my Aslan AI is on the brink of death. Okay, these last two are my latest ones. I've got maybe, was it last weekend or the weekend before? Within the last two weeks. So this one, <laughs> it's so sad. This is my alocasia Jacqueline. This is the only leaf I can show you. It came out of a greenhouse where um, I think the Jacqueline's are already a little bit stressed. They were underwatered, I think, and light bleached. So it was already a little bit stressed and then I got it out of the soil into Lekka. I wanted to use black Lekka for this for some reason. I would didn't get it into pond and it did the root droppage thing and it's dropping all of its leaves right now. I'm not concerned that it's gonna die, but I probably should put it into something higher humidity, but I don't want to because the nursery that I came from um, is just infested with mealybugs, spider mites, thrips. It's so bad and I don't want it in my tent or my exo with the other plants so I've treated it with some systemic and I'm just gonna monitor for any thrips or spider mites I don't think it has mealybugs 
but if nothing shows up in the next couple weeks I'll probably get it into um, a greenhouse and let it root there with a little bit more warmth I think is what it's missing not necessarily light but yeah I was really excited to have this plant I wasn't expecting it to die back so dramatically but it really did so I don't think it's a goner but it's definitely not fully here either it's just gonna be a work in progress I don't see roots growing I just see dead roots so that's cool maybe I will just do that water experiment with this since like all the roots are gone maybe I'll just stick this thing in water and see what happens and once I see some roots growing then I'll maybe put it back into the leka so yeah <laughs> hopefully the next time I show this plant it's gonna be a lot cuter than it currently is let's just hope that it does not die because I really really wanted this plant last plant is this one is alocasia lukey one and it is a hybrid between alocasia alba and alocasia sinuata you can probably see the similarities here put them side by side they look very very similar it looks like a paler greener uh, sinuata this one also came from that same greenhouse and it was like two dollars or something like that i was really excited to get it. it was not a plant that i'm like head over heels in love with i already have sinuata this is so similar but it's two dollars so <laughs> i was like yes please it doesn't seem to be doing as poorly as the other ones did with the pond transition and this one is actually isolating on my kitchen counter right now because it seems a little bit hardier I didn't need to put under grower lights and so I've just given it like my kitchen light it gets a little bit of um, northern exposure in the morning and pretty much like barely any light for the rest of the day but it seems to be doing okay it doesn't seem to be rooting yet like I don't see I only see maybe a couple of new roots some dead roots but it did push out this leaf in my care it's quite small but it's doing fine like it's you can see how perky it is so I'll throw up a photo of what um, a more mature one looks like it looks like a big arrow shaped like sinuata but a lot lighter green just a little bit more modest a little bit less dramatic less contrasty than a sinuata but also still very beautiful so it's like I think maybe has the potential to grow quite large given its parents or given the the alba parent at least but yeah this one is um, I think gonna be really cute I think it'll be pretty easy to grow as well so that's the last one and I got this about two weeks ago and then lastly I thought I maybe just throw in a couple of like alocasia wish lists so I don't want to super grow my alocasia collection massively I don't think I'll ever love alocasias the way I do anthuriums and philodendrons philodendrons and anthuriums I feel like are so much more like at the heart of why I grow plants I don't know how to explain it it's they just do so much more for me and they motivate me so much more and they just I just get so much more joy out of growing them <laughs> to me alocasias are kind of like they're all kind of like the same plant in a, a different outfit if that makes sense like they are beautiful I really really like them and some of them I like really deeply love but the variation between the different species is like less interesting less diverse maybe is what I'm looking for I think alocasias are beautiful to collect but I don't think I have that level of obsession over them as I do philodendrons and anthurium so that said I'm not going to expand my collection very much but there are a couple that I am eyeing at the moment so the first one is the um, alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath because I think the dragon's breath is this particular variety that is like very narrow and silvery if that's not correct then I'm wrong but this one is one that I've been looking at for like the past year or so and it's really really cool I haven't seen many of them locally I'm waiting to see the price go down or maybe like do like a corn trade or something of this it would be a really cool one to collect because it looks like it's like it's silvery it's so beautiful but it looks like pure evil and I love it so I really want this plant so that's an alocasia I really want and the other one I wanted is the one that um, Charmaine showed me yesterday Yesterday, and I do not know how to say the same alocasia poon sac <laughs> poon poon cac born borneensis pun pun cac pun <laughs> pun chak pun it looks like it has a really kind of like rhinocerosy texture to the leaf and it has like that beautiful 
kind of aslani eye looking texture with that margin and it's like i'm gonna show the photo that i'm currently looking at right now it's so stunning it doesn't look like a super thick one but it does look like it has enough thickness to have some texture behind it so that one i've never seen locally i've never even heard of it until charmaine sent this to me but if i can find it that would be really cool so i'm assuming this comes from borneo given this name borneensis maybe it'll become more available next year who knows it's on my radar now and if i come across one i'd be very interested in getting one that's what i love about alocasias is that like you can trade them so easily by corn like so many of the alocasias i own were were like little corn gifts like it's just pluck one out give it to a friend off they go like it's they're so much fun to trade like little pokemon cards like you don't really even have to like disturb the mother plant cut them or anything you're just like plucking these little candies out of their substrates and like giving them to friends i just it's such a fun plant to propagate to share to trade that way and um for that reason i would never pay a ton of money for an alocasia because of the way that they're propagated like the the prices are always bound to drop dramatically even for you know an alocasia that starts out quite expensive like aslanii when it came out last year the year before was like it'd be hard to get one for like under 200 dollars but now they're 20 bucks in the nursery so to me alocasias will always be like a friendship plant like a plant that you share the babies with amongst friends and if you have a friend group like you only need one of that type of allocation. Like, I mean, what my friends and I do whenever we have an allocation, we just buy the one and then we share the corn. Unless like we are like desperate to have a larger specimen or if they like cost barely anything, that would be the only time we each buy one. But um, for the most part, if we're not desperate to have one right away, we would just buy one, share the corns. And that's pretty much, that's what I did with the uh, Jacqueline. I bought one plant and I just separated two little pups from it to give to Charmaine. The Cupria I grew from a corm, the Maharani I grew from a corm. I shared so many corms of my Alocasia Silver Dragon. It pops like crazy. Black Velvet. Alocasia is just so much fun. They're like the party plant. They're <laughs> They like party hard, they crash, they come back. They're just like, you never really quite know what they're gonna do and I find them so much fun. So anyways, it is now close to midnight. I'm done, I'm so done for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if there should be any other alocasias on my wish list anything I don't know about. You guys know what I like. I like texture, I like venation, I like kind of funky, dirty, evil looking leaves. Let me know if there's anything I'm missing, if I need to be putting another plant on my wish list. I had put up a question box on Instagram for my next week's video, I hope. I hope I will be able to do this for next week, but it's gonna be a repot, doing a little plant chores. And um, if you have any questions you want me to tackle in that repot, please, Feel free to leave it as a comment to this video and I'll add it to the list. But yeah, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.